the folks who are pushing these power plants just don't get it. Look around this room. You are the real New York. You are the folks who live here and work here and struggle here. They want to destroy your lives for their profits, and that is wrong. You all know it, I know it, and the organizers know it. We need conservation. We need a better transmission system. That's where some of the problems are. This is not California. I don't care how many times the New York Post, on behalf of the corporate giants, says it's California. It's a different system. It's a different condition. These are our children, our neighborhoods, our homes, and our lives. I am with you every step of the way. What do we want? No power plan. What to say? We're not going to take it. What did your son say? We won't back down. Let me hear it. We won't back down. We won't back down. We won't back down. We need housing and jobs. We don't need 
need any more corporate pollution. We have it organized before. And I think the saddest part of it is that we got tired of fighting these battles, tired of fighting incinerators, tired of fighting garbage transfer stations. And we had finally started to come together as a community where we were saying yes to what we wanted, not no. We're not going to let these people take our dream away from us. This waterfront belongs to the community. We're going to put it to work for our community. We're going to put it to work for our community. Well, Bayside Fuel, you better watch out because this is the coalition that's going to make sure to defeat anything that you plan to ruin our environment. And if we have to bring another lawsuit to stop this, we'll do it. We just want to know that we're all together in this fight, each and every one of us, because we're here not for ourselves, but you see these little kids in front of you holding signs, we're here for the kids to make sure that they can be brought up in a healthy environment. A power plant with her support, with Connors, with Fisher, and the elected officials that have constantly supported communities like ours, there will not be a power plant built here. The people, the people united will never be divided. And as long as we continue to work together, to fight together, this power plant should not be built. Look at this crowd. You know, somebody needs to rise to the occasion to let everybody know enough is enough. You've already got your share of power plants. You've got your share of waste transfer sites. You've got your share of sanitation garages. It is time for us to open up the waterfront and have public access. It is time to look elsewhere. This is Brooklyn. And what I see in front of me is men and women and children. I see families. And they're saying loud and clear, we want to be able to breathe. We want to understand what's going on in our neighborhoods. We want to understand why we can have an environmental impact study. We don't know what you're bringing here now. All we know, as the science says, we're wheezing. There's something wrong with that. Total known emissions in CV1 in tons per year is going to be over 3,400 tons. At least 3,400 tons, maybe up to 5,000 tons per year of emissions. We want to send the message to Bayside Fuel that Williamsburg is over capacity on air pollution. Enough is enough. And I just have to say on behalf of Chairman Abadi that we stand with our neighbors for a cleaner air and a better community and we join you in opposing this facility. Thank you. Yay! We are together, Williamsburg and Greenpoint. We are together. And we are going to fight the same way as we did with another power plant just over there. And we are going to win this fight. We are not going to let the power plant to get built right over there. This is too much for us. We don't want power plant in here. Thank you. It's nice to see that shine or rain will not prevent us from saying what we want, from deciding for our future. The decision is not going to be made by those companies who want a profit on our backs. The decision is going to be ours, and we are saying no to any more power plants. Money, we are poor, but nobody, some of us, some of us, and many of us are very poor, but nobody can rob us of our voice. And we will be loud and clear no power plants, no power plants, no power plants, no power plants. No power plants. No power plants. No power plants.
have made their money on Greenpoint and Brooklyn and the other places right here. And what do they do? They bring power plants to Greenpoint? You all should be ashamed of yourselves. We've had trouble with trucks like Bayside Fuel. We've had trucks like transfer stations. We've had problems. We've made truck routes and taken them off our residential streets. We've fought with sewers in this community. We're so forced to have parks, which we had the lowest amount of parks of any community board. We have been fighting all our lives for something. And now we need every, I've lived in this community all my life. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving. This is my How many people here are opposed to 1,000 to a 1,500 megawatt power plant on the Greenpoint Williamsburg waterfront, two blocks away from the new state park, a few blocks away from the historic district in Greenpoint, a few blocks away from the thriving center of the Northside community in one of the most polluted districts in the city on a waterfront that has already five permitted, proposed, or already existing power plants. Show of hands, how many people are opposed to this power plant? I think we accomplished one of our goals tonight, to show this private power plant developer that this community is strong, that Williamsburg Greenpoint is united, and we are committed to do whatever it takes to stop this power plant from being put in our waterfront. The one reason why this developer is here tonight, there's one basic reason. He's in this community to make tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars off the backs of our community. That's what this is about. Before this, this developer even got started, he came up with a name, Clean Point Energy. He took the historic name of Green Point, cut it in half, added the word clean on the front of it for a power plant that will emit 1,500 tons of toxins per year in our lungs, into our ear, for generations after a generation. He had the insult to our community to call it Clean Point Energy. That's the kind of people, that's the kind of salesmanship, that's the kind of cynical manipulation you're going to see no beginning tonight. Yeah, and I see a face of somebody who has a surprise for us. Ken Fisher.
I will, I will be brief. I will be brief. I want to make just a couple of points to you in all seriousness, and then I have some, some news to share with you. First of all, part of the problem that we're facing is the notion that the, when the state in, enacted this deregulation legislation that said that Con Ed wasn't going to be in the generating business anymore because they wanted to encourage the development of new power plants. And so instead of having an energy plan, what they've set off is a gold rush where there are many proposals all over the place, most of them in poor and working class neighborhoods that, they, that people think can't defend themselves because the first plants that get built are the ones that are going to make the money and the others are going to fall by the wayside. And that's not a way to protect us from the kind of energy problems that they're having in California. So we need the governor and the state legislature to go back to the drawing boards because their deregulation plans are unfair to neighborhoods like this one. We need to level the playing field a little bit, make sure that we have the technical expertise and the resources that we need to make sure that your voices are heard in the most effective way that the elected officials and the community organizers can do. And so I'm happy to report to you that when we adopted the city budget two weeks ago, I was able to secure an allocation of $25,000 to support our organizing efforts. I'll tell you now, we'll kill fighting till we win. This plant will never be built. Tonight, you'll hear about this proposal from the person who wants to build, if nobody knows what it is, 1,000 to 1,500 megawatt power plant on Kent Avenue between North 12th and North 14th Street. That's eight acres, guys. Eight acres on our waterfront. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Adam Victor, and I am the developer who is proposing to build a power plant on North 12th Street. We have uh, asked a firm called ABB, to prepare a couple of slides for us. What you see here is these are the main power lines that come in New York City. As of May, actually, New York City was below the reserve because of some of the NIPA facilities. New York is just getting above uh, the reserve that is uh, considered a standard and appropriate reserve for reliable power. And as you can also see that over time, Experiencing technical difficulties. Yes. It doesn't bode well. This is a power plant that many of you are aware of. It's the Hudson Avenue plant. It is a plant that uses heavy fuel oil. And we believe that this plant, like many of the other plants, should be considered obsolete. This is new generation gas turbines. This one facility over here produces 50 megawatts of gas turbine uh, power. They are substantially smaller, they are substantially cleaner uh, than the plants that you have seen before. These slides show the various reductions in emissions that would come from a gas-fired uh, power plant as compared to our plant compared to the Hudson Avenue plant running on oil. This is what a gas turbine plant would look if they simply build it and didn't uh, uh, do anything to work with the aesthetics. Mr. Victor, what are the megawatt size of these facilities that you're showing us right now? These facilities are about just under 80 megawatts. So this is, a, this is this, so the facility you're proposing is about 20 times the size of these facilities, that's, correct? That's correct. And also, there are, no, there are no residences around that building, or that, 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 that uh, facility, correct? That's correct. This is the current site over here. Oh, okay. And we think that um, working with the community, there can be some design plans. And we have come up with, for instance, what we think can be done with the community over here. And for uh, that reason that we are prepared, we'd like to work with the community to have a contest. We would encourage the various community members over here. Uh, to enter a contest that we will propose with a hundred thousand dollar first prize to provide the design, the architectural design. For the 
if the community, if the community, we are making this offer today, if the community chooses not to participate, if the community, its residents, this would be open to individuals, teams of individuals, if they choose not to participate, that is their business. Uh, on this point, since okay. you're not looking and they're turning back, I see no fear of the Thank you very time. much. Mr. Victor, can you please stay for some answer and questions? Yes, I'll stay. Uh, you have represented that this plant would be substantially cleaner than other plants. I want to get in, into that, but uh, isn't it true that uh, the combustion of natural gas uh, results in uh, the, the most significant pollutant would be PM 2.5. Uh, I am not prepared to discuss so that. I'll have to turn it over to my permitting team, uh, Mr. Solzhenitsyn. Well, I will tell you. Uh, the combustion of natural gas, the major pollutant is PM 2.5. Approximately 80 to 90 percent of the pollutant emissions is PM 2.5. Now, why PM 2.5 is of great concern is that these are small uh, extremely small particles that get embedded deeply into your lungs. Uh, over the last year and a half, there's been an overwhelming body of health and epidemiological information that irrefutably concludes that fine particle exposure is one of the greatest public health risks today. It is associated with asthma, uh, upper respiratory illness, and in a study released last week, it is associated with the increased frequency of cardiac illness and mortality associated with cardiac illness. Would it be a correct characterization that from the combustion of natural gas, PM 2.5 is the most significant pollutant? Well, I wouldn't want to characterize any pollutants as uh, more significant one than the other. I don't think it's productive to try to rank pollutants in uh, Well, give me some numbers. What was the relative amounts of PM 2.5 you project from the plant? Those are numbers that can only be given after a study, and if studies are acquired by Department of Environmental Conservation, Department of Health, Public Service Commission, we will, of course, do those and provide the numbers at that time. Hmm. Uh, and I do want to note that in the projections of pollutants in the earlier graph, they did not have PM emissions. They had other pollutants, but not PM emissions. Um, well, then let me ask, uh, do you intend to analyze PM 2.5 in your project? We intend to analyze everything that the uh, health-based state agencies that, that I just mentioned that look that after the health require us to analyze. I ask a specific question. Do you intend to analyze PM 2.5? To be more specific, if they tell us that we that, are to analyze that, PM 2.5, we will. My question is not... If they do not tell us to analyze PM 2.5, then I suggest you may have an issue with them. Would you... Would you... Mr. Solzhenitsyn, you, you, would it be fair to say that this project will emit between 300 and 500 tons per year of nitrous oxide? I don't want to get into the specifics of the numbers. Your orders are... Would it, would it be fair to your say... Your order of magnitude, your order of magnitude is about right. My order of magnitude is about right. I know, because, because Guap brought together a group of scientists to get it right, and we do have it right. And, and isn't it a fact, sir, that... And it, it, you guys have no idea who you're dealing with. I mean, you are up against... A, you have a huge mountain to climb, and this is just the beginning. The, okay, let's have some more, folks. Mr. Solzhenitsyn, Mr. Solzhenitsyn, would you be willing to concede to this community that the, the level of carbon monoxide being poured out by your facility is on the magnitude of about 300 tons per year? Isn't that about right? Aren't we in the ballpark of that number? Sure. Well, legitimate, 
cumulative impact analysis should take a look at the existing burden on the community, whether you would exacerbate that. So do you understand that to be a, a, a true cumulative impact analysis? Uh, a cumulative impact analysis looks at the background as well as other air emission sources and compares them to a, back, uh, to a uh, standard. That is what, uh, to the degree okay. that it's required, we, we, we're going to do. That's what a cumulative analysis is. Guap has already done a cumulative impact analysis. Uh, and in fact, we delivered it to the Public Service Commission on June 11th. The uh, Guap put together a, a, an 80-page report, which I have right here, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to put it up on our website so that you can see it. This is a report that does an Article 10 analysis. It does a historical analysis of our community. It does a land use analysis. And it does a cumulative overburdening analysis. And at this time, I'm going to give it to Mr. Victor so that he can uh, use it. And, and it's my hope that he will use it to make a rational business decision, which will be to get out of our community. Yeah. Yeah.